event best practices. My name is Garrett Bruce. I'm the chair of the ESA Sales and Marketing Professionals Group. I'll be moderating the presentation. A few quick housekeeping notes before we begin. Uh, due to the number of attendees on the webinar, we're unable to unmute the group for a discussion. Uh, however, we certainly want you to, uh, to submit questions. We want to field questions. So let's do that by utilizing the chat window. Uh, if you will, please be sure to submit your questions uh, to me, Garrett Bruce, uh, and we'll present them to Shannon in the order they were received uh, during the Q&A session uh, at the end of the presentation. Um, after the webinar, a video of this presentation and supporting documents will be available to ESA members on the resource library of the SMP group page at esaweb.org. So if you haven't already, uh, just take a few minutes, register as a member of the SMP group, uh, and be sure to join us on our LinkedIn group and Facebook group. Uh, just search for ESA Sales and Marketing Professionals on those groups. So we're very pleased today to be joined by Shannon Murphy from NetSertiv. Uh, Shannon's the Director of Business Development for the Security Market with NetSertiv, and in this role she is responsible for developing new business and leading a team dedicated to delivering unrivaled online marketing solutions to manufacturers and integrators the electronic security industry. Uh, prior to joining NetSertive, she was the Vice President of Business Development for AE Ventures, which many of you may be familiar with, and was responsible for the sales and growth of industry events such as uh, ESX, which is the Electronic Security Expo, the Electronic Security Integrator Forum, and the CE Pro 100 Summit. Uh, she has a Bachelor of Arts degree and an MBA in Marketing from Bentley University. So today, Shannon's going to share with us her expertise um, on maximizing the return from trade shows and other events your company may be participating in through the coming year. So Shannon, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, at this point, I'll kick the presentation over to you. Thanks, Garrett. I appreciate the introduction. And in just a moment, we'll be showing uh, the presentation. So thank you again, as Garrett had mentioned, for joining us. Um, hopefully today we're going to be able to provide you with a step-by-step -step plan to successfully participate in events that will drive new business to you. And Jacqueline, if you could just give me the controls so we can get the presentation up, that would be great. Shannon, I apologize, but unfortunately I, I don't see you in the staff view, so I'm only able to hand off to Garrett. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Garrett, do you want me to send that over to you? Actually, I just technical difficulty, everyone. Uh, I just kicked it to you. Do you not have it? I don't yet. Okay, I have it now. Okay, everybody, here we go. Okay, so what we're going to cover today is we're going to talk about identifying the right shows and events for your business, pre-show marketing, pre-show planning, and as part of that, certainly the logistics planning that you need to make sure you're covering prior to an event, training your booth staff, and of course, post-show follow-up. So I'm going to dive right in with just a few industry statistics here. Uh, today, the exhibitions and events industry has an estimated value in excess of $100 billion, so it's a pretty large business out there that you know, there's a lot of opportunity for you to take advantage of. There's nearly 13,000 trade shows produced here domestically and more than 20,000 trade shows held internationally. Approximately 3,000 of those are events, uh, events are public or consumer shows. So where do you begin? Um, I strongly recommend that you research these events online first. Home shows can be a great opportunity for you. Uh, but think outside of the box as well. You can certainly contact the local convention centers in your area or the local chambers of commerce as well and get their events scheduled to see if there may be any that would be appropriate for your business. And in terms of getting kind of creative there, figure out exactly who you're trying to reach while doing events and where they're spending their time online. It may be at events like boat shows, luxury lifestyle events on the consumer side and residential side, or it could be events 
such as corporate facility manager networking events or other types of business-to-business -business types of opportunities that you could leverage. I strongly recommend that you're doing your research fully and you understand the exact profile of the attendees before you're signing up for any of these shows or events. Uh, just to start to dive in here to the pre-show marketing, Certainly, most of these shows make their attendee lists available in advance, and I strongly recommend getting those attendee lists. You can use them to send out an email or mailing uh, with a call to action or invitation for them to visit you at your booth. If you're going to be doing anything uh, in particular in terms of giving away trips or products or solutions, you want to make sure that you're announcing those prior to the event so that you're on the calendar in the schedule of the folks that are attending and making sure that they're going to come see you versus either your competition or just other exhibitors that are going to be there. Um, any new promotions or specials for the shows, again, should be announced in advance. Or if you're planning any new offerings for that particular event, this is a great way to make sure that everybody is aware of that information. If it's available, I also strongly recommend having your sales team to follow up with phone calls to try to schedule specific appointments. Uh, if the phone list is not available by the show organizer, this could be a really great opportunity and excuse for you to reach out to your existing clients, let them know that you're going to be at that local event, perhaps provide them with a free pass if that's made available by the show organizer. And this is also a good time just to kind of check in with them, make sure that their system's working, see if they have any questions, and let them know if there's anything new and exciting that maybe they might want to upgrade to that you may be offering. The other thing you can do is, is research sponsorship and speaking opportunities at these different events to try to elevate your profile and exposure to the attendees at the event. Um, again, just kind of mentioning contacting the show organizers because every single show is different and they all have different things that they offer to their exhibitors such as expo invites which could be free passes for any of your customers or prospects. Uh, they may have awards programs that you could enter or any special ways that they're going to help you get your announcements out there to either those that are attending or the general public to try to drive traffic to the show. A few other things here that I'd like to point out. Make sure that you're posting the event on your company website. Uh, most show organizers will also send you a logo or a banner ad. To make this very easy for you, you can just post it on your site so that anybody visiting your site knows that you're going to be there and they could potentially set up a time to meet with you at that event. Also, you want to be sure to completely fill out your directory listing. Most shows have online and actual printed directories, so you want to make sure that you're submitting your information for both so that folks can find you before, during, and after the event. And some organizers will also permit you to add additional information other than just basic contact information for your company. And so those could be things like your logo, links to your site, or email. Um, it could be brochures or show specials that you might be offering at that event. And this is a great way, again, to make sure that folks are aware of them. I also recommend sending out a press release about your plans for the show to your local media outlets. This can really um, help to, again, kind of raise your profile in the industry and among all of your prospects and current customers. So again, just overall making sure that you're announcing what you're doing and trying to drive as much qualified traffic over to your booth as possible. You also want to be sure to include your show plans and promotions if you have a company newsletter. This is, again, a really good way to let everybody know what your plans are. And I always recommend designing marketing materials well in advance. Uh, so they should be very easy to read. They should give an overview of your products and services offered and provide complete contact information. Um, the other reason it's important to do these things in advance is so that you don't have any late charges or rush charges because you forgot until the last minute to design some brochures for your booth. Um, the other thing is exhibit signage and displays are very, very important. That's really what's kind of capturing the eye of the attendee who may not have a pre-scheduled meeting with you. There's many companies out there that offer signage and booth displays, uh, even including rentals. And this is just a quick slide. You don't have to uh, write all of this down. As Garrett had mentioned previously, you're going to be able to download this from the site, the S&P site. Uh, but here are a few companies that offer varying degrees in terms of um, just kind of pop-up types of booths or signs, all the way up to very large custom design types of displays. And again, you'll be able to 
uh, get all of this information after the webinar. Uh, just kind of continuing here with pre-show planning, one very important thing that you always want to make sure you're doing is taking your booth out before you send it to a show and setting it up. That's going to ensure that all of the pieces and parts are there. Um, and you don't want to have any surprises once you get to an event. So certainly make sure it's in working order prior to shipping it or bringing it with you to a local event. Um, also, it's very important to know what's included in your booth. Uh, oftentimes, different shows may include carpet. They may include electrical. They may not. So you want to make sure you have a good handle on that. And anything that you may need in addition to your space, such as carpet, electrical, furnishing, or lead retrieval machines, or any other costs that you may incur, such as drayage, are on your radar. Uh, for those of you who may not be familiar, drayage is essentially the cost for getting your materials from the loading docks at typically a convention center to your booth space. Um, and this is also sometimes part of hotel fees, too, if the event's being held in a ballroom or something like that at a local hotel. Uh, oftentimes, there are early bird discounts that you want to take advantage of. And make sure that, you know, again, you're going to have everything you need when you show up the day of the event to get set up. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out is every single event has different rules and regulations. So you really want to make sure that you have a very complete understanding of what those are prior to showing up at the event. Um, you know, if you have a booth space that uh, is smaller or larger than you initially knew, you want to make sure you're going to stay within the, those parameters. And you also want to make sure that your signage and display itself are within the rules. Uh, there's often many occasions where folks have displays and signs that don't meet the rules or regulations, and they're forced to either move their space, fix, uh, you know, not fully display all of their signs or whatnot. And so you just want to make sure that you can avoid those things in advance. So really, again, just be prepared overall. In terms of um, what you're going to bring with you to the event, you want to make sure that you have more than enough business cards. And of course, um, plan accordingly on the giveaway front if that's something that you're planning to do. Always recommend checking in with a show organizer in advance to get a good idea of how many folks have actually registered for the event and their anticipated projection. Um, you should also bring with you some press kits with information on your business, any new offerings that you have for the event, or that you're promoting at the show. And if this is an opportunity, not every show has this as an opportunity, but if they have a press office, you want to make sure you're dropping off those press kits there. This can be a really great way to get some added uh, media coverage in your local market. Um, if they don't have a press office, you may even want to have some of these prepared to have available in your booth in case any of the local media do stop by to learn more about your, your business or your offerings. You also want to make sure that you're setting very clear objectives in advance of the event. So what are the results that you're expecting in terms of either leads, closed sales, appointments at the event, and how are you going to measure those? I think it's very important to make sure that these are set in advance of the show uh, so that you always have them in mind and your booth staff have them in mind as you're working through the event. Um, this will really help to make sure that you're focused and your staff is focused on the right things at the event to get the expected outcome. Also, if you can plan some sort of offer to attract attendees to your booth, that's also going to be very important. Um, it could be something as simple as entering their business cards in a drawing to win something. Uh, and if it's something really of value or very exciting to the audience that's going to be there, you can certainly use that in your pre-show marketing materials as well. From a logistics planning perspective, um, just depending upon where the event is located, you do want to be sure that you're arranging for any travel, hotel stays, um, certainly in advance. Um, oftentimes, larger events may have headquarter hotels or hotels that are close by, and they'll offer group rates. And so again, another reason to plan well in advance of these events is so that you can take advantage of that and stay within your budget for that particular show. You do want to make sure that you're staying on top of all of the exhibitor deadlines. And there can be a lot of these. Uh, so you know, again, you're wanting to make sure that you are in touch with the show organizer and you're constantly on top of what you might need to be sending their way to get the most out of the event. You do want to be sure to register your booth staff 
in advance of any of those deadlines, so they do have exhibitor badges and can get in on time to set up your booth. Um, and sometimes these events will have networking events, educational sessions, or other types of opportunities that you or your staff may be interested in taking advantage of. And also, you know, advanced pricing uh, could be a possibility to take advantage of in those cases as well. So the other uh, thing from a logistics perspective is make sure that you're talking to the show organizer and you find out exactly when you need to sign up for the next event. Um, you know, depending upon the event, maybe they have quarterly events, maybe they're annual events. And this may or may not be important to you depending upon the size, but oftentimes you can take advantage of cost savings when you do commit in advance and take advantage of better locations um, on that show floor when you're signing up early. Now we're going to move into the training booth uh, personnel. Here's a list of some do's. You know, certainly you're working very hard to make sure that this event is going to be successful for you. So first and foremost, you always want to make sure that you're attracting attendees into your booth space and you're welcoming them. Uh, staff the booth with incredibly knowledgeable staff members that are going to be able to answer the attendees' questions. Um, when you kind of put yourself in their shoes as an attendee, they're bombarded with sales pitches at the show. So you really want to be different. And I certainly recommend having a list of questions prepared that you and your staff can use really to make it an interactive conversation, um, get to know you types of questions, and uh, also questions that are going to help you qualify that particular attendee so that you, know, you and your staff understand whether you want to spend some significant time with this particular prospect or not, so that you're not wasting time with people that aren't a good fit, while four people that could really transform your business and be great customers for you just walked by. So that's really important in terms of kind of weeding through the masses and making sure that you're prepared and your staff's prepared to figure out who the best people are to be spending the most time with at an event. And of course, you want the interaction to be as pleasant as possible for that particular attendee. Some pitfalls that I wanted to kind of cover today uh, and keep in mind, these are some things you should never do in an event. Um, you should never sit in your booth. If you look here at uh, the image that just popped up, if you have staff or you yourself look like this, odds are people are not going to stop by and talk to you. Um, you never want to have your back to the aisle. You don't ever want to be distracted or focused on a coworker or a laptop or cell phone while working the booth. And you don't want to make attendees feel as though they're interrupting you or inconveniencing you by you know, asking questions about your offering. Uh, the final thing here is never, ever leave your booth unattended. Uh, folks are not going to feel as though you have something valuable to offer if you are not present in your booth and you don't have any staff in your booth to help them and answer their questions. Odds of them coming back are pretty slim. So you always want to make sure that you have enough staff throughout the day and uh, rotate them out so they're kind of fresh as well uh, in terms of interacting with people because it can be very tiring on the show floor to kind of be on all day. Uh, next, I wanted to cover some post-show follow-up. Um, now that you've really done all of the hard work and spent time with prospects and customers at the show, you need to follow up. Um, too many companies really just focus on getting through an event because it becomes a burden to them. Um, and then all of their hard work in the early stages really does go to waste because the sales team doesn't properly follow up on the leads or the leads aren't distributed out in a timely manner uh, or appropriately to the right people. So you definitely need to have a post-show plan for following up on leads. And here's um, another thing I wanted to touch base on. We touched on it earlier in terms of making sure you've set some clear objectives, but how are you really going to track that ROI? on a particular event, because that's very important. Oftentimes, you're investing a significant amount of time, money, and resources into participating in these events. And you want to make sure that it's worthwhile for your organization. Um, I've included a quick link here that is called the ROI Toolkit. And it is for uh, figuring out the value of an event to your organization. And I'm going to show you a quick screen screenshot here. This is a completely free tool. Um, and again, you'll be able to download this uh, particular presentation and you'll have access to that link after the webinar. Um, but you can enter in um, a lot of information into this and it's actually going to generate out for you um, an ROI for that particular event. So I recommend using it. It's completely free and it's an opportunity to make sure that you're staying on top of um, the ROI on all of the different things that you're participating in from an event's perspective. Uh, continuing on in the post-show follow-up, 
ideally each lead should be captured at the show and tracked through to a resolution. So whether that resolution is the lead is closed, it's won, and you've sealed the deal, that's great news. Um, you also want to know how many were not able to be closed, so lost leads, future opportunities, et cetera, so that you can kind of get these guys into a queue if they haven't closed for a particular reason but may still be qualified. Um, I do recommend using some sort of um, CRM system. You could certainly use things like Salesforce.com, Axe, or Goldmine. There's a whole host of other uh, software or uh, just CRM systems and tools that you can actually use to make sure you're tracking all of this information appropriately. I always recommend sending out a thank you, um, whether that's in the form of an email, a letter, or something more substantial. It's a really great I idea and way to be remembered. Thank yous can go a long way, and it's often something that gets put on the back burner after an event because you're so busy. Uh, trying to get back and, and caught up after an event, uh, but I strongly recommend making sure that you're continuing that communication uh, from before the event, during, and then of course after. Uh, in addition, I also recommend your sales team personally following up over the phone to explore whether the opportunity is real or not, kind of continue to qualify that particular prospect, and then set up next steps as soon as possible. The other thing that I'll mention here too is Whatever you can do on-site at the show to make the post-show follow-up even more effective and efficient is a great thing. So for example, if you're collecting information or if the particular show does offer a lead retrieval system where you're scanning a badge and then you're able to capture all of that particular attendee's information, you may want to write down specific notes um, or information that was particular to that person so that when you follow up, you can say, hey, Joe, I know you live in XYZ, and this is what we discussed, um, or what's important to them, or what their need may be, or pain point that you're hoping to solve. So definitely make sure that um, whatever you can from the in-person conversations you are able to gather, you're able to then reference them in the post-show follow-up. So with that, the big takeaways here, certainly do your research. Um, again, you want to make sure that you're going to be investing in the right events for your business that are going to return a significant amount of business, hopefully, for that investment that you're making. Being prepared is incredibly important. Um, you don't want to ever show up at a show with missing booth parts or forgot your business cards or get there and realize that you thought you had carpet but you don't or you need internet service for some reason. Um, so there's definitely things that you always want to make sure that you're covering that we mentioned above. Again, planning thoroughly kind of goes hand in hand with that. And be different. Um, you really do want to stand out from the crowd. Typically, there are dozens, if not hundreds, of other exhibitors at these events. And you want to think of things uh, that are going to help differentiate you from either your competition or just all of the other companies that are vying for the attendees' attention. Again, staffing your booth appropriately is very important. You want to make sure that the folks that are there really can answer questions are going, and are going to represent your company the way you would like to be represented out there among your current customers and prospects. And then again, follow up. So with that, those are really kind of the key takeaways from the webinar today, and hopefully all of that translates into driving additional revenue for your business. So with that, Garrett, I'm going to hand it back to you. Thank you very much, Shannon. We appreciate it. I have one question here. Um, what, are, what are some ways you recommend standing out uh, from other exhibitors at an event? That's a great question. Um, I would say that there are a lot of things that you can do in terms of standing out. Um, certainly much of which we covered here today is going to help you do that. Many exhibitors do not communicate with the attendees before an event. So really starting to reach out before the event and develop as many relationships um, as early on as you possibly can is going to be important and help you stand out um, amongst all of those other exhibitors that are there. Uh, the other thing I would point to there is try to work on a theme for your exhibits and your talking points at the show that you can really kind of carry through from your pre-show marketing in those early interactions you're having with the attendees. Um, and then carry that through on-site as well as in the post-event follow-up so that 
these particular folks have a consistent message. They understand exactly you know, what you're trying to communicate to them, and it's a very clear uh, solution that you're offering. So that's definitely important. Um, the other thing I would do is also make sure that your promotional item uh, that you may be planning is appropriate. So if, if there's some way to tie it into your company, the message you're trying to communicate, those are all things to really kind of brainstorm, bring your team in on, and try to figure out. Um, some things that I've heard in the past that can work really well, you could send out um, a promotional item that might be incomplete to the attendees. And by incomplete, I mean it could be missing something that they then have to come and pick up at your booth. So whether that's some sort of gadget, uh, without a controller or batteries um, or something else. Maybe it's a portion of a gift card that when they come they get the other half to, to actually use it and redeem it. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you can kind of come up with there to be creative. Uh, that's going to be different. That isn't just a kind of me too brochure that they got in the mail um, in advance. Uh, some other things that you could do are again kind of making sure that those interactions that you're having at the show are very different. There's always a lot of sales guys at trade shows, and I would say kind of what we spoke about before with arming your staff with a list of kind of get-to-know-you questions. They're going to help you qualify those folks. And then make sure that they understand that you care about them and their needs and their problems, and that you're really trying to solve that for them and not just sell them something that they don't need. I think that's really important, and I think companies that do that do tend to uh, just in and of itself you know, that enables them to stand out from all of the other people that are just trying to get their credit card or um, sell them something. Uh, the other thing you can think of, too, is a lot of these consumer shows, a lot of families are walking the events. And if you can do things that attract the kids, the parents are going to follow. Um, so there might be some interesting ideas, um, you know, depending upon the size booth that you have. Maybe you have a little area that's dedicated to coloring for kids or some sort of um, activities for children that occupy their time because their parents are going to be there waiting for them. And that's a great opportunity for you to start to discuss um, some potentials uh, in terms of working with those folks. And then uh, kind of finally, I would say make sure that your signage is very simple and clear to the point. Um, that really is what's going to catch the eye of the folks walking down the aisle. And if they don't understand it or your booth's really cluttered, that's not going to help you draw them in. So you want to make sure that you have a very kind of clean, consistent look throughout all of your marketing materials and your booth signage itself. Uh, oftentimes, food and beverages is a great way to pull people in. These guys are sometimes really tired walking around the show all day. Um, treats for children or just adults in general are also a good thing to do. Uh, and I would say that um, you know you just want to make sure that there's people in your booth. Most people are attracted to booths that have other people that look interested in what they're talking about in them. So one thing you could do is maybe have family or friends uh, just kind of scattered throughout the event. Maybe they're attending the event anyway. And if they notice that nobody's in your booth or that it happens to be a particular slow period, have them come over and spend a little bit of time. And I bet you that that's going to attract additional folks into the space. Garrett, were there any other questions? Yes, um, I have one. Is there, is there any particular strategy for booth placement? Uh, meaning, uh, you know, do you want to be next to the door? Do you want to be in the middle? Do you want to be near the refreshment, um, the, the, the vending? Is there any truth to the fact that, hey, you want to be in one of those kind of locations, or does it really matter? You know, I think it can matter for sure. Um, at any event that I've ever been to, it seems as though there's always some area that seems slower than others. And so what I'll kind of cover is, uh, some things to take to keep in mind. A lot of companies, and everybody has a different strategy on this, so I think it really just kind of depends on uh, a few different factors. Certainly the size of the show, uh, the size of the other exhibitors, uh, that can really kind of factor into that. So when I say the size of the other exhibitors, if there's folks there or companies there that have really large island spaces, and those are basically booths that you can walk all the way around, and there's four aisles surrounding them, those typically tend to draw a lot more people. The reason those companies are taking larger spaces is typically because they need that space to accommodate all of the interest that they typically generate at 
an event. And so I do recommend uh, trying to get near kind of the big guys or the big exhibitors at an event because you can typically draw off of their uh, attendance as well. Corner locations um, oftentimes are requested at events. And uh, I think that there's definitely some, uh, you know, validity to choosing a corner location because you can, depending upon how you configure your booth, draw from two different aisles, which, you know, ideally you're going to be pulling, especially at busy events, you're going to have the opportunity to pull more people in from different directions. And people will see your booth space from different directions instead of just walking up um, you know, an aisle and you're kind of next, you know, if you have neighbors on either side, you're a little bit more blocked than if you're on a corner. Um, also, Garrett, as you just mentioned there, being near food I think always helps. People are drawn to food and that's why, you know, I mentioned that as one of the ways to stand out from the crowd because not every company is going to offer food and beverages and people are always looking for that, whether they're paying for it or they're getting it free at a booth. So I think positioning your booth space near, um, you know, any concession stands or food stations that may be set up on the show floor is definitely a positive thing as well. Uh, another question here, how much, how much do I need to budget for an event? That's a great question. <laughs> um, I would say each show is going to have very, pretty widely varying pricing and it really depends on the type of show that it is. Um, I would say that on average for a local home show, uh, you should plan to spend probably at least $2,000 across your booth space and the basics for it. Um, you know, that really, that budget could of course increase or decrease just depending upon how much marketing collateral you decide to do. Uh, and of course, if there's any travel, lodging, entertainment expenses, those types of things that you might incur based on the location and the different plans that you have for the event. But I would say probably a good budget number would be about $2,000. Um, and I'd say that would probably be for a kind of standard 10 by 10 sized booth. And then I'm sure that it can go up from there. If, it, if you're talking about a really large um, annual event that takes place that they get you know tens of thousands of folks at, that's going to go up pretty dramatically. But I'd say on average, that's probably a good number to shoot for. All right. If there's any last questions, guys, kick them over. Uh, in the meantime, I'll see if any of those questions pop up. I wanted to remind everybody that um, once we wrap up here, a video of the presentation and all of the supporting documents, including some of the tools that Shannon mentioned, will be available um, on the resource library of the SMP Group webpage, uh, which is located on esaweb.org. So again, if you haven't registered uh, on the site as a, uh, an SMP, uh, please take a few minutes to do that. And uh, while you're at it, make sure you uh, join us on our LinkedIn group uh, and, and like us on our Facebook page. Just search for ESA Sales and Marketing Professionals. Um, so with that, it looks like we're all wrapped up with the questions. Shannon, thank you again. Shannon, sorry, uh, Shannon, I have, I have a couple questions that came through. Oh, okay. sure. Go ahead. Um, are event organizers obligated to provide you with a registered attendee list for pre and post? They're not obligated to, and some shows may charge for that. Uh, but it's, and some make it free. Certainly, the um, advanced list is often free. Um, so it really is going to vary depending upon the show organizer and what their particular policies are. Uh, but that's another reason you really want to be in touch with either an event coordinator or whoever your primary contact at that particular show is because they can walk you through that and help you. Um, and sometimes just purchasing those lists is well worth its weight in gold as well um, as long as they're reasonably priced. So they're not obligated to, but most would like you to communicate with them because that means you're going to have a more effective show and you're going to hopefully come back as an exhibitor. So there's definitely something in it for them as well to allow you some access to the attendees. Okay. Okay, and the next question I received, if your goal is to set an appointment either to have a client come to your showroom or um, book an appointment in their home, can you provide um, what has, some examples of what you have found to be successful? Uh, sure. I mean, I think asking for the appointment, certainly first and foremost, is what you need to make sure you're doing and that all of your staff is doing. Um, you know, sometimes the staff just aren't prepared 
or they feel as though that's a bridge too far um, to kind of push for that. But if you're in a, you know, a decent conversation and the person is very receptive, asking for that appointment is important. And I think having the materials with you to be prepared to set that appointment is going to be critical. So whether that's an appointment book or some sort of online scheduling tool that your company might use, uh, I think that that's something you want to make sure you're prepared for, especially if that's your goal for the event. Um, I'm not sure if I'm answering that question fully, but I would say that all of the marketing materials really should be centered around that result. So whether it's um, in the pre-show marketing materials, making sure that the brochures, uh, the call to action basically is to call for an appointment at the show um, or after the event in their own home, that's definitely going to be something that uh, you want to make sure you're doing. And then, of course, all the materials on site as well, making sure that the brochure somebody might take with them has the right follow-up information. Um, or if you can just get that appointment scheduled immediately, that's going to be the best result because then they're, they've committed, you know, that they're interested in what you have to offer. So I think just really pushing for those appointments when you have the opportunity is incredibly important. Okay, perfect. Okay, and on my end, it looks like uh, we've got all the questions covered. Great. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for taking some time with us today. Um, thank you again, Shannon. We certainly appreciate it. It's great, uh, great information. Excellent. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye.